A very good evening everybody. Welcome to our Celtic Spirituality Reflection as if from St Michael of Northgate Church in Oxford. Hope your day, hope your week have gone well. A little bit later we will be remembering the great historian and teacher, the Venerable Bede. Before that our opening words remind us that wherever we are on our journey, on our pilgrimage, we are travelling in the company of one another and indeed all those who have travelled in faith through the centuries. And so these words, we travel together, mindful of the enfolding love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Words from Psalm 125, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and for evermore. A prayer this evening from St Columba. Be thou a bright flame before me, be thou a guiding star above me, be thou a smooth path below me, be thou a kindly shepherd behind me, today, tonight and for ever. And verses from Psalm 86. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, Lord, no deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvellous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name for ever. For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength on behalf of your servant, Save me because I serve you, just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Amen. And our creed. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female, we believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb, he ascended into heaven to be everywhere present throughout all ages, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the Church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of all resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. B died on the 26th of May, 735 AD. On his deathbed he was still working on a translation of the Gospel according to St John. He was a great translator, he was a great teacher, he was a great letter writer, and he was a great historian. He's sometimes known as the father of English history, or the father of English historians. He was certainly the first one to do it in such great depth and breadth, and much of what we know for a couple of centuries before his time, we know because of Bede. A wonderful mix of history and story all intermingled in, uh, often very fair on people, 
and a good mix of what we would now call the great saints of Celtic spirituality, but also the Roman Catholic Augustine and his successors from Canterbury onwards. Bede was uh, in monastic life most of his life. I think he joined when he was seven. And he is one of the many, many examples which uh, show that those in monasteries were in no way closed off from the world. And Jarrow was a centre of learning really across Northern Europe. And the contact that these people would have with each other in the great monasteries, but also across the kingdoms, across the lands, both throughout what we now call England and across Europe, was really substantial. One of his most famous passages was about King Edwin of Northumbria. And this describes how Edwin was encouraged to think that there may be more to existence than just what we can touch and see and experience, uh, which is often a theme in our modern day as well. Christian missionary had gone to Edwin and tried to explain about Jesus. Edwin wasn't quite sure about it. And then one of Edwin's advisors said this in Bede's words. Consider this, my king, when we think about our life on earth and then dwell on that time of which we have no knowledge, let us think of a sparrow flying through this banqueting hall where you are dining on a winter's day with your thanes and counsellors. There is a comforting fire which warms the hall. Outside the hall, the winter storms of rain or snow are raging. This sparrow flies swiftly in through one door of the hall and out through another. While the bird is inside the hall, he is away from the winter storms. But after this moment of warmth and comfort, he vanishes from sight into the world from which he came. Humanity likewise appears on earth for a little while, but of what went before this life, or of what follows, we know nothing. If this new teaching can tell us more, it is surely right that we should consider further. And Edwin did, and became a Christian. That theme of there being our physical, tangible world and the much greater world out there has uh, been picked up by writers through the centuries and of course it's very much in the New Testament as well. C.S. Lewis in his great sermon, The Weight of Glory, sort of flips it round we, and he delivered this during the Second World War here in Oxford and as we can tell from Bede's account of Edwin's conversion or beginning of conversion, for Edwin, he was advised that what we see and touch feels warm and cosy. Out there it's dark and unknown, but we need to know what's the dark unknown. And in fact, one day that's going to prove to be fabulous. Lewis switches it round a bit and points out that here in this earth, it's sometimes a little bit dark and unknown. It doesn't always feel warm and cosy, but we have glimpses that from outside there is joy and beauty everlasting. And it's as if there's light shining through the cracks of the window shutters into our present earthly world from that bigger, outer, spiritual world. So Lewis writes this. At present we are on the outside of the world, the wrong side of the door. We discern the freshness and purity of morning, but they do not make us fresh and pure. We cannot mingle with the splendours we see. But all the leaves of the New Testament are rustling with the rumour that, that it will not always be so. Some day, God willing, we shall get in. And maybe all the leaves of the New Testament are rustling is an echo also of the Holy Spirit. We marked Pentecost last Sunday, Trinity this Sunday, Father, Son and Holy Spirit at work within us and the leaves are rustling, that there is even more to come. Bede loved recording people's conversion and journey of faith, as well as more straightforward history and battles and so on. And much of what he writes is inspirational and thought-provoking. The thought about outer world and inner world, spiritual world and tangible world, Maybe reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, St Paul writes, As it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, 
neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. As it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Bede on his deathbed, translating the Gospel of John. That Gospel full of great promises and great truths about Christ, of the signs of the kingdom that Jesus ushered in and will one day come to all fruition. He died full of faith, constant, kind of conscious of these words that we don't yet quite pick up, understand, glimpse the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So let's be thankful for the life of the Venerable Bede all those years ago and all those through the centuries who have sought to teach, to translate, to record inspirational events for the sake of God's people. And so to our prayers. Through Christ, the firstborn of all creation, we pray for respect for the earth. Through Christ, Prince of Peace, we pray for peace for earth's peoples. Through Christ, King of Love, we pray for love in our lives. Through Christ, Lord of the Dance, we pray for delight in the good. Through Christ, Divine Healer, we pray for forgiveness for past wrongs. Through Christ, the Morning Star, we pray for the grace to make a new start for ourselves and for our world. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Blessings on your weekend. Blessings on Trinity Sunday, however you are going to celebrate it. And these words of blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen.